Are you taking care of your spine in your yoga classes? I sure hope so, because while a total knee replacement is definitely a thing, a total spinal replacement is probably still pretty far off. Today is day one of our Yoga for Spinal Health Challenge, and we're going to be focusing on using two simple props to help us deepen and relax. Today you are going to need two towels and a block. If you don't have a block, then a very large book or a stack of books could probably work as well. Okay, roll out your mat, and I'm going to roll the intro screen. Hello, magnificent human beings. My name is Landon Slaughter, helping you discover that fun and consistent at-home yoga practice. Today is day one of our seven-day Yoga for Spinal Health Challenge, and today we are focusing on props to help us deepen and relax. Normally in past challenges, we move through 30 minute flows and we do a lot of postures, but keep in mind for this whole challenge series, things will be slowed down just a little bit. This is all for demonstration purposes to make sure we really are dialing in the things we need to dial in. So the focus will be both on learning as well as getting a full body flow in. As mentioned before, you will need two towels and a block. If you don't have a block, then a large book might be able to work as well. I hope you are ready for day one. Let's dive in. Beginning today in a comfortable seated position, go ahead and grab those two towels and slide them underneath you here, propping yourself up so that it kind of shifts that pelvis into a slightly better position thus making things easier on that low back, lower part of our spine. Close your eyes, roll your shoulders back, and let's take a few breaths. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your nose. Keep going. Good, slow, steady, gentle breath. Setting that intention, maybe visualizing a nice, happy, healthy spine, a relaxed one, calm, however you like. Good. And once you have your intention, we'll seal it with three cleansing breaths. Inhale through your nose. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Hold. Exhale out the mouth. Good. Inhale through your nose. Inhale, inhale, inhale. We hold. Exhale out the mouth. Once more. Inhale through your nose. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Hold, hold, hold. Sigh it out. Good. Opening up your eyes. Go ahead and swing your legs on around. We're coming into that staff pose. So you may have to move your towels around, towel blanket, whatever it is you're using. Ah, good. So this kind of helps our hamstrings, but ultimately helps that lower back, right? Because when you're up a little bit higher, it makes it easier to eventually fold forward. But for now, hands by your sides, kind of waddle a little bit, grounding those sits bones into the earth. Shoulders roll back, breathe. Okay, and then when you're ready, inhale, lengthen, creating space through your spine, right? And exhale, hinge, fold on down. Hands grab wherever you like, shins, ankles, feet, and then just kind of settling in. So it can be kind of tough, right? First forward fold of the day of our practice. My uh, hamstrings are pretty tight from running a lot, so... Plus, I really feel this in my low back. You know, you can let yourself round. But we're trying not to, you know, let that back round too much, kind of why we're propped up here. So hopefully this helps you to deepen, deepen, coming on down a little bit more, a little bit more. And 
releasing, coming back. Good. Okay, left heel, bring it on in, base of your forehead to knee. Go ahead and grab your block and place it underneath that knee. So if this helps that low back feel a little bit better when you're hinging forward, then excellent. If not, you can take this out of the way, but just kind of giving you options here for that healthy, happy lower part of our spine. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, hinge. Come on down. So you'll really be able to feel this if you're here and you say, okay, this feels all right versus taking this out. You know, does it help you deepen? Does it feel nice? Does it feel different? Do you need to change the height of the block? However it feels for you might be different in your kind of hip area. Just keep breathing. Depending on how flexible you are in this pose, you may feel it way back in that low back, kind of almost in that SI joint area. And so our SI joint is that joint in between, you know, our hip bones and our sacrum. And so that sacrum is that lowest part of our spine. So being kind of conscious of even that low, low part of your, uh, of your spine, of your low back. And gently release, switching things out. So opposite side, go ahead and bring that right heel in taking your block, placing it underneath your knee, however you like, trying to line your midline up with that big toe, squaring things up. Okay, inhale and exhale, hinge, coming on down. Just breathe. Really getting in touch with how things feel in that lower part of your back, right? Just slow, steady breath, maybe taking this block away, seeing how that feels as you come down, putting it underneath, seeing how it feels as you come down. And release. Good. Again, not forcing anything, right? We want a healthy, happy spine. Go ahead and bring that foot on out. You can bob it out, shake it out, move things around a little bit. We're coming into our bound angle. Feet come together. So again, being propped up here kind of helps to shift yourself forward on those sits bones, encouraging that nice gentle curve in that low back, which was what we want, rather than how we sit in a chair, you know, most days, which is slouching. So roll your shoulders back, growing tall. Breathe. Soft hips. Good. Inhales create space. Exhale, soft hips. Good. And relax. Excellent. Go ahead, swing your legs on around. We're coming into that tabletop. And your blankets, your towels can just stay right where they are. Kind of help providing a little padding for your knees. A few gentle cat cows because we kind of want to warm up that spine if we're going to be working on it, right? So go ahead and inhale, roll your shoulders back. I gaze lifts for that cow. Good. Exhale, cat. Gently push the earth away from you, rounding in that spine. Nothing too severe. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cats. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. Good. Neutral spine. Wag things out. Move it around. Okay. Still trying to get all of those parts of our body warmed up and moving. Coming into some modified lunges. Take that left foot. Go ahead. Bring it on forward, good. And then hands on up overhead, modified crescent lunge. Breathe. Excellent, hands come on down, back into tabletop. Wag things out, move it around. Good, right foot, go ahead, bring that on up in between your hands, hands come on up. Good. Feeling that lengthening right through our torso. So this challenge is a lot about creating space through our spine as well. You're going to hear that. It's a very common 
theme. There's even a whole day where we kind of dedicate to it. So really just focusing on instead of just lazily being in any given pose, always seeking to create space through your spine. Good. And hands come on down, coming into that table top. Good. Wag things out. Move it around. Okay, grabbing your block and go ahead and place it in between your thighs. We're going to be coming into down dog, but down dog is a lot about stretching out that back. Hopefully you've watched the uh, posture tutorial video a while back. But go ahead and place this uh, block in between your thighs and then coming into down dog. Now, if you have to move your feet around, that's fine. But really the main point or main goal here for today's down dog is gently squeezing those inner thighs. And the more you do, you kind of feel that stretch in your low back, right? Because it encourages you to lift your tailbone. So squeezing those inner thighs, lifting your tailbone. Good. Okay. You can remove the block. Hopefully you kind of felt that stretch a little bit there in your uh, lower back. So we're now going to be coming into our modified warrior series. So from down dog, take your right foot, bring it on up. You can lower down to your back knee, untuck your toes, hands on your hips. So base of our modified lunge, right? Place your hands along the left edge of your mat. So just place them on down and kind of swing that back leg around. Okay, so do your checks. Heel in line with your knee here. You don't have anything weird happening like this or this. You know, you kind of want to be as squared up as you can. And then warrior two. Good. Breathe. Holding in our warrior two. It's really nice to have this whole towel here for your leg because it protects your knee and your shin and everything. So really helps in that regard. Okay, so another note about creating that space. We're coming into gate pose. Grab your block. This right leg extended on out, so you're balancing on that heel. Take that block and place it down on the inside of that leg. Left hand comes up overhead. So normally in a lot of these kind of side bending poses, like in triangle, in gate pose, in our crescent moons that we do, we have a tendency to just collapse into our side, which isn't the best kind of for that low back area, right? When we use a prop to place down on the mat and push us away from the mat, it creates length through that low back. So we breathe. Modified gait pose here with that block. Good. And if you're curious as to what I mean, go ahead and release the block and bring your hand down your leg. And notice how, while you do deepen and come further down, you kind of create less space. So there's that balance, right? You need that strength through your low back to create your space. But here, we're kind of taking a little bit of that strength element out of the equation and just focusing on the length. Real, real slow, come back into warrior two. Good, you can just leave the block there. Good breath, nice and steady. Okay, go ahead and switch things around. Take your block, left hand behind you. We're coming into a modified reverse warrior. So you can bring your right hand up, left hand is holding on that block behind you. Again, kind of create space. So we did that along the left side of our body, on the other side, now here on the right side, <laughs> creating space. So breathe. And you can tell right away what I'm talking about is if you take the block out of the way and then you come down, you know, it starts to shift things around, feels weird. So having that extra space allows you to create more space. <laughs> How's your breath? And coming back into warrior two. Good job. Okay, we're just going to swing everything around, coming back into our tabletop and then downward facing dog. So however you like to get there, 
swinging things around, moving stuff around. Spread your fingertips, tuck your toes, down dog. Good. Pedal it out, move around. Okay. Taking that left leg, bring it on through. Base of our lunge, lower down to your back knee. Hands on your hips, maybe pausing at your beverage station for a little bit of water. Good. Okay, hands along the right edge of your mat, and we swing that back leg around. So again, doing your checks. Heel in line with your knee, and this knee is stacked above your ankle. Modified warrior two. Good. Steady breath. Go ahead and straighten this left leg on out, grabbing for your block. Left hand underneath you, right hand up overhead. So you can kind of use that block to gently push away, like pressing into the block helps to lengthen through that side body even more. And slowly coming back into warrior two, just briefly. Good. Having your block maybe ready for your back hand. And then we can set it on down and a modified reverse warrior with our prop here. Maybe pressing away just a little bit from the earth, lifting that left hand. Good. Coming back into your warrior two. Just a couple breaths. Steady, focused breath. And go ahead. Come on down. Downward facing dog. However you like to get there. Good. Shake things out. Move it around. Weight shifts forward into plank. Just a brief plank pose today. Breathe. Lower all the way down to the mat. Untuck your toes. You can release into a cobra or an up dog. However you like. And then come on back. Downward facing dog. Great. Lower down to your knees. And coming on up onto your knees here. We're going to be setting up for our camel. So go ahead and take that block and place it in between your heels behind you. Holding your camel. Now camel is a really intense back bend and we're going to be visiting camel probably pretty often throughout this uh, series to make sure we're doing it correct. But um, because it is such kind of a tough back bend and can be hard on that spine, here's a great way to kind of just gently modify in your camel. So you can lean back, kind of grabbing for the block. So even if you're just here, right, you're almost like maybe even sitting back on the block, but you have your hands here, that's fine. Eventually, just shifting your weight forward a little bit and raising your heart up. So if you notice, my hips are not stacked above my knees. And this is fine because we're more concerned about a safe back bend than anything. When you really force those hips above your uh, knees, trying to stack them above your knees, then it gets to be, you know, a little challenging on that low back. So breathe. Remember pressing that block into the earth, creating space, lifting that heart, and coming back, coming onto all fours, tabletop. Good job. Okay, we can move that block out of the way and then just sitting on back into a brief thunderbolt. Go ahead and take one of your towels out of the way. And then with whatever towel you like, just maybe folding it in half. So we only need about half of it here. So your shins are on the towel with a little bit of space. So you still want maybe about half a foot uh, of space between your toes and the edge of the towel. We're coming into rabbit pose. 
And I just want to show you a cool trick with your towel uh, to help you kind of gently deepen in your rabbit. Chin into chest, forehead all the way down to your knees. Hands grab back for that towel. And then go ahead and lift your hips. Come forward and you can gently pull on that towel to help deepen and round in your spine. Now don't do this a lot, but just a little bit is okay. Pulling on those on that towel, kind of helping you to round a little bit more in your spine, almost getting that kind of cat sensation, right? And release. Good. Excellent work. Okay, we have a nice juicy shavasana ahead of us, but about using these props for that relaxation in our spine, we're going to use each towel for something different. So hopefully you have grabbed two. So this first towel, go ahead and swing on around. Just roll it on up. So we're just going to kind of make a little roll here for uh, to put under our knees in Shavasana. So that's the first one. And if it's pretty small, that's fine. You don't probably need too much height there. Your other towel, you want to roll it up relatively thick as you can. So, you know, about this, because we're going to place it underneath our neck. And then when we do this, it will kind of help create space in that neck and encourage that gentle curvature of our neck. So if you feel any pain, discomfort, obviously backing off, moving these props out of the way, the neck, the spine obviously can be a very sensitive area for a lot of people. But a note about the towel that you'll be placing underneath your neck. It's not so much underneath your neck, rather there's these kind of two bones here in the back of your skull and you want it to be almost resting on those. So not the very back of your skull, but you know, this kind of like spot right here where your neck turns into your skull because you wanna create length and space through your neck, if that makes sense. So it's gonna take you a little bit to get set up. Place the rolled up towel underneath your knees. Go ahead and come on back into Shavasana repositioning however you need to. So I've already got to move my knee towel down a little bit. And then uh, this guy on your neck here, just finding whatever feels best, a good position for you. Again, maybe you have it where it's just encouraging that curvature of your neck, but not forcing that curve. So just breathe. You've got it. <sighs> got to move this microphone thing away so <laughs> everything feels right. Good. And just for a little bit, breathe. Try to loosen on in. Again, if you need to adjust something, go ahead. But we are going to stay here for a few breaths, so breathe and relax. You've got it. Again, having your towel positioned so that in, it encourages that curve in your neck, not forcing it. Good. 
choosing to stay here for a little bit longer, that's fine. Or if you like, go ahead and gently pushing yourself up into that seated position so that we can bow together. <laughs> Take your time. It's all right. Very good. Fantastic job today. So happy that you're coming along with me on this challenge through focusing on the spine and yoga. Obviously, it's a very, very important part of our anatomy, and it kind of gets overlooked a lot of the time in many different poses. So I'm hoping this was a nice, gentle introduction into your new seven-day challenge. And now it is time for the best part of class where we set our intention into motion, but we already have because we've already practiced using that block, using those towels. So this is kind of a little mental note, kind of check in with yourself each time, you know, how crazy is my yoga practice going to be today? Will I need a block? Should I grab a towel as well? And the more kind of relaxed uh, yoga practice that you're going to want to do, you probably will want to have a block and or a towel next to you. If you're doing more of a swift moving vinyasa style practice, then you might be able to leave it out. And before we go, here are your next two steps. First thing is put a reminder in your phone, your calendar, whatever it is you do, however you organize your life to make sure that you hop on tomorrow's challenge. Day two is coming at you tomorrow. And second, for you, my YouTube subscribers, if you have not already hopped on the membership, please do so. There is a link below where you can sign up and dive into at least three days, maybe even the full seven days, depending on how far you want to take this challenge. And as always, thank you, magnificent human beings, for choosing to show up, not just showing up for this practice, this challenge, but showing up for yourself as well. I will see you in the next video and... Namaste.